Welcome back, everybody. It's another episode of Connect Share Prosper. I'm your co-host, Chris Angel, here with your host, Chaz Wilson. Chaz, I we're backstage today. It's like backstage oh, pass. Love it. Love it. Love the it's backstage like, pass. This is like a, yeah, this is like a concert where you get to talk to the, the musician before and after the concert. Like, uh, <laughs> sometimes uh, you guys listen, so you got to know, like, we'll show up and Chaz will have a couple talking points and we'll just kind of go, right? But today I was like, I, I kind of want to ask you questions and Chaz is like, let's do that. So yeah. This is backstage. I'm ready. I've never been backstage, so it's cool. Okay, so you're backstage for your own event. That's perfect. Yeah, yeah. For your own interview. Well, I, the the first question that I'm gonna we're gonna break these questions into multiple episodes. If that's good with you. Yeah, I love it. Okay, good. But the first one, and this is, I mean, each one deserves its own episode. So here's the first question. Like, uh, I've known you since. I mean, I interviewed you probably last fall, maybe yeah. last winter for my podcast. And then I uh, came down to um, Success School for um, that in, in, in uh, Granite Park last spring. So I've, got, I've been able to see you, like, you always have a million things going. Like, mm. I, I just dizzying for me. I'm like, I don't know how he does it. Like, I'm trying to keep a couple things spinning. Yeah. And you're spinning like 5,000 5, things. And, um, and I'm sure people that know you know this about you too. Right. So my question for you is, like, how do you sustain – such a fast pace. I, I think my comment to you before we hit record was like, you must just breathe deeply all the time. <laughs> yeah, you know, what's interesting is you say, you see me doing all these things. Some would say, maybe close to me would say not very well, some of the things, <laughs> right? So um, it is very fast paced. And I don't know if that just is more like you get accustomed to that kind of fast pace. And yet at the same time, I'm still very disciplined with my timing. Like yeah. for instance, my routine is my routine and I don't, and I'm just very, I don't know what it is. I just feel a sense of purpose that drives me that I hate wasting time. Like if, if you, if someone really wanted to get under my skin, it would be to waste my time. Like to just make me feel like I waste time. And there's every once in a while, you know, I'll get asked to sit on a meeting or a board or something like that. And I, and I accept, and then there's no agenda and there's like, you know, people side conversations yeah. and I'm like, Oh my gosh, I can't sit here. I, I, yeah. I got things to do. Right. So um, I, I really think, Chris, it's just a strong sense of purpose that drives. I want to there's I want to dig into that a little bit because um, it you you are um, look I don't want this is I mean this in the most uh, kind and loving way possible. Though you're very right. stoic. You're very yeah. like you show up and you're very task oriented, business oriented about things. I mean you're you're kind and 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 approachable, um, but I just I'm, I'm like does does it ever bother you? Like you just never show frustration like are you ever brought to like the brink of the are you ready to jump off the ledge or not oh well first of all i appreciate that uh and i, and I understand that about myself like i know yeah. sometimes people who've worked here for a while who, who maybe knew me like they were members of master networks and then they became you know an employee and they just man, really want to work with you in this organization and then they're, they're around me a little bit more and they're like man like that's a side of you i don't always see and i think there's some of that like but I, I, I just share with you a couple of things on this. So yes, I do get frustrated. Yes, I have the gamut of emotions like most entrepreneurs. I think though over the years, I've been able to get a little bit better at how to deal with it. Mm -hmm. and, and maybe it's just an awareness to like a sense of gratitude for where I'm at. Like I've been at the very bottom and I, I just don't forget those things. So I understand it could always be worse. So as bad as it feels today, I feel like, well, it could always be worse. Right. And so I don't, I try not to let that get to me, but the truth of the matter is, you know, listen, in, in, in seven and a half years, at least since we started master networks, you know, there's probably been, uh, maybe three days where, um, like it's been so overwhelming that nearly, or has brought me to tears kind of thing. Like, yeah, yeah. Like that, that kind of mm -hmm. uh, emotion, um, you know, but overall that's not a lot. But it's yeah. There's days it's a it's a heavy burden to carry. But um, I, again, it goes back to purpose. I think whenever you build something that has as many moving parts as it has, I mean, look, the reality is most businesses have more moving parts than people think they have when they start the business, yeah. right? There's always more under the surface than you actually realize, and you get in and you're like, "What have I done? What did I do starting a business?" Yeah. And but you know, like when, what's that saying? Uh, first you make the choice, and then the choice makes you. Like. Mm -hmm you're just going to now make good about it and keep going. Cause that's what you signed up for. Um, so here's what I want to know. Like at the, 
if we looked at like an emotional scale, there were three days out of seven years where it was like brought to tears. I've had those days, probably more than three in like three years. Um, you know, more than three crying sessions in three years. Yeah. Right. Good for you. Three and seven. So but, I don't know that that mat. Like I don't know that that matters. I'm just. I was saying it was three days, right? Yeah, no. Well, yeah. I mean, look. And those listening to this, you can you can evaluate however many <laughs> days of tears you've had and however long you've been in business. But my point is, uh, that that feels really low. Like on the emotional scale, that feels very low in the pit of it all. So I want to know first, like, how do you, when you're in that space, what does Chaz do? Do you just like check out and go to the lake for a day or like what does Chaz do to like get back to neutral? Yeah, so it's really interesting and I, I notice myself when I start to go that direction, right? It's like, again, I think I have a high sense of awareness when I start to feel myself going that way. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Right. So before I get there and I think that's the lesson I'm learning each year that I'm in business is how do I, how do I become aware before I get there? Yeah, it's gold, man. That's so good. And, and the thing that I do is listen, I've been in a place, I've talked about this in my books where I had $27 in my account. I talk about how, mm -hmm. you know, getting a knock at the door because I couldn't afford my house payment and someone saying, look, if you, you know, you don't make these payments, right. You know, you could lose your house. And those are low days. Like those are just low days yep. in every one of those situations where I've been at the bottom. And so maybe somebody listening to this is in a place where their business isn't going well, their relationships aren't going well at any stage whether it be personal or professional, where I've been at that place, you know, the thing that helps me get up is just merely having a plan. Mm. Mm. You know, I don't even have to be executing the plan, but if I feel like, okay, I'm stuck, mm. like think about it anyway, like you're lost. That's how you feel. You're lost. Mm -hmm. If you were lost mm -hmm. in, in the mountains, in the, in the woods yep. somewhere, you're going to go, I need a plan. Yep. And you're going to start working towards that plan. And when that plan makes a lot of sense to me, I get certain about that plan and I move in that direction. And honestly, getting into activity that way changes my state of being pretty quickly. So good. Dude, that is so good. So um, I know I've had many days and I think I haven't managed it as well, but I have had many days where it feels very confusing. Mm -hmm. Like, and I've probably consumed so many ideas that my plan feels all over the place. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's yeah, like, right. Oh, I've got a plan for the business and I've got a plan for my marketing. I got a plan for hiring and I got, I got a plan to write a book and I got like and pretty soon, like I've got 50 plans and I, and now I'm confused. It's like, it's like trying to climb the mountain and you have 50 routes and you're like, wait, which am I supposed to go left or right? I don't, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Right. But it sounds like you've been able to kind of go, cause you have like, you know, a lot of things working. So it sounds like you just kind of, what do you reduce it down to like the, what's going to get me to the next mile marker and then turn that into a plan or what? Yeah. And you know, the interesting part about it is in almost every one of those cases, it's not been what, but who, who mm -hmm. there's obviously a who missing that would have helped me not get in this place. And that's also more advanced for me now is start to go, you know, if I'd had somebody looking over this or if I'd had somebody doing this and I quit trying to do it all, then perhaps I wouldn't be where I'm at right now. Yeah. So I start to look for who um, as part of that plan. So I might map it out. I mean, that's why I joke, but everyone around me is like, as long as he's got a whiteboard, he's good. Like, <laughs> yeah. It's like my, you yeah. know, some people need a coffee, some people need a gallon of ice cream, whatever it is to help right, them feel right. better. As long as I have a whiteboard, yeah. I feel better because I can map out what I need to fix. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Right. And then if I map it out and I bring people who are close to me and say, look, this is where I think we've been stuck. This is how I think we change it. Who do we need to bring into this? You know, I don't know what it is, Chris, but for me, I feel like, okay, I can solve anything. I just have that mindset that I can fix anything if I have a plan. Mm. And when I don't have a plan, then I'm confused and then I'm yeah. you know, I'm frustrated. That's so good. I, uh, I was gonna ask a follow-up question, but I think it might be the same answer, but you know, you just tell me if it is or it isn't. So at the lowest point where I have a day where I'm brought to tears, yeah. um, the answer could, could, at least for you is still like, if I can find a plan, if I can map out a plan, I know my way out of where I am right now and I can focus my energies, and my attention there. So I get productive about it. If you go up the emotional scale where it's like, you know, it's not one of the three days out of seven years. It's more of like a, you know, a weekly or a monthly like, oh, I'm so frustrated right now. Things aren't going the way I want them to go because you must have those days. Of course. Okay. Uh, weekly, monthly. Well, is it the same thing? You just create a plan or do you have other things, strategies you do to kind of 
get productive and move forward? You know, it's interesting. Um, I think back a couple of years ago when I had one of those days, uh, I'm going to give you two parts to this, right? So I think back a couple of years ago when I had one of those days, I came in the house. It was very early on in Master Oaks history. I mean, we probably had 12 or 13 days where we had like literally we had no money in the bank account. We're trying to start this thing. We're trying to grow it. And we got a payroll, albeit small at that stage. It was huge to us. It was a mountain of a payroll to make. Yeah. Especially when you have no money and it's just feeling beat up. Like I just like, Oh, this isn't working. I'm confused. All that. And I remember walking in to my house and my wife was there and she kind of smiled. Like she could just tell my face, like just, Mm -hmm. um, Cause although you say stoic, I wear my emotion like, and a lot often it is very level. I try to keep it that way, but yeah. Um, so she's like rough day. I'm like, Oh my gosh, one of the worst. <laughs> and she, I remember it vividly. I walk it across the room. She's sitting on the couch and she stands up, walks over and gives me a hug. And I'm like, Oh man, I just needed that. Like mm. ah, somebody's here. Right. Mm-hmm. However, for those of you that know the story and know the, know the uh, title to this book. And if you're listening it says now make good the yeah. book I wrote, she, gave me a hug, embraced me, leaned into my ear. And she said, you hired up for a tough guy. Now make good. <laughs> nice. Thanks a lot. Like, that was that good. Was that good or was that bad? I was like, you don't get to use my <laughs> stuff on me. Like, I know, right? Uh, right. So, but that phrase has always helped me in those moments and they do right. come daily, not just weekly and monthly. They come daily. Like the yeah. truth of the matter is. Okay, good. That's what I wanted to know. Yeah. yeah here, here's what I'd actually say to somebody who's thinking that. Um, I used to think that like, and what you said, like, wow, you've only had three of those days, but the reality is, is because I'm actually having 30 of those throughout the day. Right. Yeah. And I'm pivoting. It's like the, you know, the airline that just changes every so often gets back on course. Yeah. I'm having those so often that I'm looking for them and I'm pivoting quick so that I don't get to a place as often as I did before where they're just overwhelming. If you're looking for them, like what are the, because if you're looking for them and you're getting good at pivoting, then you're also, I'm guessing, getting good at seeing the warning signs or seeing the, seeing something coming. So it's not always a reaction. You can now actually like see it coming. So how do you notice? How do you, how do you see it coming? So yeah, so what you a couple for? of things for me yeah. are, um, I, I'm easily frustrated by things, right? Like, oh my gosh. And yeah, me too. Kind of step back and you go, what, why am I really frustrated about that? Or or, or getting frustrated with people, right? And things like, oh, they let me down here, they let me down there. It's like, okay, that's not the issue, yeah, right? Um, hmm. And so for me, those are the signs I start to look at. And what I really come down to is having a plan and then getting to activity. I said this the other day to somebody uh, in a coaching mentoring session. I said, at the end of a day, like when you walk in the door, back to your home, whatever, do you, do you feel fulfilled? And he right. said, yeah, like maybe one out of 10 days. Yeah. I said, okay, great. Let's stop for a second. Out of the one out of 10 days, the day you go home, and you feel fulfilled. Describe that day to me. And what we broke down to after all these questions I got down to is the days that he has made lead generation calls, the days he's made a sale, he goes home. It doesn't matter how busy he felt the other days. He felt productive. And so he went home feeling fulfilled. And I said, well, then we have to get rid of everything else so that you're feeling productive every day and you feel fulfilled. Hmm. that was for him. And so now, you know, as I said that advice, I hung up the phone. I'm like, okay, now I got to think about that for myself every single day. What are the things, the activities that I feel fulfilled and I get the most excited and I get that energy back. Yeah. And when I feel the frustration and I feel the, um, you know, people irritants and those kind of things that come into my life, I look at it and go, I haven't been productive. I've been busy. And if I actually stop and get productive, those things just go away. Wow. I can see I, that my mind's going to different places because the first one of the first thoughts is like, uh, it would be easy in that moment. I, I think people could, so the first thing is I think people could feel when they're getting frustrated. You'd be like, okay, I just got frustrated. And if you didn't notice it, that frustration could take you all the way down the pit yep. into all sorts of dark places where now it's a lot more work to get back to neutral. But if you can notice the frustration quickly, like, okay, I'm frustrated. What's that about? That's clearly not about the situation. There's something over here. And then change quickly, like create a plan and then get into action. Like if you can micro adjust faster, yeah. you'd get out of that. And, and listen, I, I mean, I don't always stop it either. Like I, I sure. oh man, I'm eight rungs down, 10 rungs down. I'm like, oh. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I, I so know. It's just laugh, laughing from uh, familiarity. The, but I can see people going, um, okay, I noticed that I was frustrated. 
uh, the places that I feel most productive are, well, I'll give you mine. I feel yeah. like every day I get to teach or I get to coach. I love it. Like those days are incredible. Love those days. Um, or days where people interview me. So yeah. then I go, because, because it's me trying to share out what I feel like life has taught me. So those days always feel good. Most of my days are actually spent in trenches of details and systems and trying to build the guts of the business to live, you know, past my next effort to be, to be sustainable and scalable, right? So I hear that and I go, well, I mean, that's good, but the stuff still got, the systems still have to get done. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I can't spend all day teaching, coaching, and getting interviewed. Why not? Right. That's my, that's my point. So, okay. It's my point, but then my follow-up question is like, well, then what, what do I like? Well, then what do I do? Right. So that's what I was saying. When I look at it, where, where I get stuck and where I get frustrated, once I create the plan, what I, I would say 80, 90% of the time, I realize it's the who, like, yep. again, it's the yep. who could be doing the details. Yep. And then the question we all, and then we start, right? Yeah. Then we go head back to past because yeah. we stop and we go, well, I can't afford that person. Right. Yes, that's right. That's right. You anticipated my, my next, my next move. Right. right. Because, right. It, because then it goes to, and that's more, and now we're getting into limiting beliefs or stories mm -hmm. we're telling, but I'm like, well, gosh, that's going to, I, I can, I need an assistant, but that's going to cost money. I don't have money for that right now. I'm barely trying to get it done. Like how do I, so, and now. share a secret though. Let me just share a secret though. Yeah. Good. Because I have 14 employees and I have. 75 1099s across the country right so i've done a lot of hiring mm -hmm. um i have all have almost never been to a place where i had the money before i hired them almost never still to this day like every time i don't have enough set aside for payroll yeah. i'm always setting aside and trying to gain on that yeah it's like i almost never have enough i'm always yeah. investing in people ahead of where i need them right 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 which is which would explain why you were able to grow because if you have people there to help it grow it's not dependent on you it's you've got the resources and the, the the bandwidth from your team to make that happen how um so how do you the 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 logical question is how do you do that like if you don't have it to the payroll to add how do you add somebody you take a loan do you get really creative in your negotiations for how you what your compensation plan is all of it Okay. I mean, everybody's in a different spot, so they have to figure that out. Yes, I'm always, and one of the shifts I made too is I look at each individual position and hire mm -hmm. as to how can they bring in revenue. I mean, that's kind of really a separate topic we could really spend time on. However, mm -hmm. that's what gives me motivation. That's what gives me fulfilled. And the other side of this too, Chris, is at the bottom, when I'm feeling at the bottom, I also have to be in awareness of reminding myself that there are 14 people here with families, right. hundreds and, and thousands of members across the country, master networks. And so, Honestly, sometimes that burden is what overwhelms me. Like I, I'm, I'm leading an organization that, of this size and there's a lot of people counting on us right. to do it right. And so I can have my pity party for the day, but then tomorrow I've got to make good on it. Yeah. Uh, I could keep going down this road because I think this is, uh, first of all, um, but I think this is good. I feel like this is, there's been some amazing gems in this conversation. Um, uh, how I think I, what I want to sum up with is that this is just the life you signed on for as an entrepreneur. Like as you're a business owner, right. there, you, the whole thing about that is you're going to be stretched and, and to expand. You're going to, you're going to be stretched as a human being and that's just part of the job description. So I love that you're talking about looking for the patterns, like look for what throws you off, notice it sooner, create a plan, get into action around the plan in order to get your energy out of the, 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 the doom loop of it all and move yourself into the constructive space of it all. Yeah, because let me just wrap with this. And I've shared this story before of certainty, because when I create a plan, see when I'm feeling low and I'm feeling confused, I'm feeling, I feel like I have uncertainty. Mm -hmm. Yes. And when I have certainty, I move towards something. And that's why I say when I map it out. So I tell the story all the time about a young father who's um, down in the canyons of Southern Utah, driving his son late night or getting dusk, you know, and they, they decide to head back. And as they're coming back, they hit a fork in the road. It's a true story. And, hmm. and, uh, and the fork in the road, and they go, we don't remember a fork in the road when we're going out, which is actually true. Cause when you're going, you see these little offshoots, you don't remember them. They're, they look different when you're coming back. So he says, dad, which way are we supposed to go? And he goes, you know, I don't know. I actually don't know. And he said, his little boy, and he says, dad, do you, do you care if I pray and ask God to help us? He said, hmm. sure. Like at this point, I need all the help I can get. Let's figure out where we're supposed to go. So the boy prays and he says, dad, we're supposed to go to the right. And he said, you know, I was feeling we need to go to the right. Hmm. 
So they drive down, the, the, they pick the right, and they, they go down, and they, they about half mile, they hit a dead end. And they turn around, and they come back. As they're driving back to that fork, the son says, Dad, why do you think God told us that we needed to go to the right when it was the wrong way? And he said, you know, son, the only thing I can think of is that now we're certain that's the wrong way to go. <laughs> wow. And now we wouldn't keep driving going, are we on the right path? Are we on the right path? Are we on the right path? No, we certainly know that is not the right path. And we found that out quick, that that wasn't the right path. And so sometimes I think in life, when we get stuck and we feel that way and we go, why did I, why was that wrong? I felt like that was right. Well, now you're certain that is not the right path. Yeah. And now you can be certain about the other direction you're going. So don't look at those things as a challenge. Look at them as an opportunity to be certain about where you're going. So good. I think certainty might be my word for the year because it's the thing I've wanted the most, mm. right? In the middle of all the ideas and all the strategies and all the things demanding my attention, certainty is, is it. That's when I feel certain, I'm willing to bet the farm on whatever it takes to go where I want to go. That's exactly right. Yeah. So good. Chaz, um, if people want to coach with you, if people want to learn more about Chaz Wilson and how do I get Chaz to mentor me or coach me, like how, yeah. where can people go to connect with you to help them? Well, you can always hit me up on social media directly. I, I, I answer all my direct messages, uh, all those direct. And you can also go to chaswilson.com, C-H-A-S-W-I-L-S-O-N, chaswilson.com. I've got group coaching, mentoring, all that stuff on there. Um, be, so good. Be happy to. I love it. I love it. I love what you're building and I love how you're building it because you just, you're, you're composed as much as uh, we have just talked about how it can be uh, a crazy time. Uh, you do it with um, some finesse and some mental determination that is um, remarkable. So thanks. Thanks for sharing your wisdom today. All right. Thanks, man. Thank you.